Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Welcome back. Today we're gonna to be looking at how to use a query loop to loop over a Metabox group field. So we're gonna query loop a group. When you have a group field set up, a group field can group together subfields inside Metabox, and then you can make that clonable. So you can always come down to the bottom, click add more. If you wanna add three more images, and pick your images that you want and just add them on. It's really quick, it's really easy. And then bricks, we can come in and say, hey, I wanna loop over each one of these items here. How you get it set up's a little bit tricky and we're gonna rebuild this whole thing from scratch and show you how to do it. You can take this uh, setup here, this workflow, put in a template, put it on a page uh, use it as a reusable template wherever you want. Uh, it's up to you. But the goal here is to query loop over each one of these items here and show you how Bricks has integrated with Metabox to loop over the group. With query loops, you may be used to looping over custom post types or terms like categories and tags. But now we can loop over this group, which is really powerful. So what uh, we're going to build that out in just a second and see how it all works. All right, let's dive in. Okay, we're in the WordPress dashboard now and the first step is to go find the Metabox icon and click Custom Fields. At the top, you'll see Add New. Click that to add a new one. And then we need to give it a title. I'm gonna say something like Query Loop Group. And then come and hit the add field button and you can type group here or scroll all the way to the bottom under the layout section and pick group. Now you'll notice that the label is default to group. So if you have a bunch of group fields in your WordPress setup, then you want to name them something unique because when you pull it up in the query loop, it pulls the label in, and so if it just says group on all of them, you won't know which one you're working with. So I'm gonna call this something distinguishable, like query loop group alpha, so we can see it in the builder. And then it assigned an ID that matched the name, and that's fine. You just want your ID to be unique. And the type is group. And we wanna make sure we click this button called clonable because we're gonna clone this group over and over again. So toggle that on and then come to add subfield. And for this example, we're just going to add an image and we're gonna use the image single. So single image subfield, but you could add more fields depending on what your use case is. So this is gonna be query loop group image alpha and I'm putting that word alpha on there just as a tag so that we can kind of see it because there's a lot of custom fields on this site here so you just want your label to be something unique that you can understand and then you just want to make sure your ID is unique as well with underscores no slashes uh, and be careful of dashes. Okay. I think that's all there. I'm going to go up to settings now and assign this instead of post type of post. I'm going to use a post type of page because I'm going to place this on a, a page that I'm going to build with Bricks Builder. If you had a custom post type or you wanted to use this on your post, you could but we're gonna use it on pages for this example. And that's it, click publish. So we have our query loop group, and inside it we have one subfield, and that subfield is a single image. We made the outer group clonable, and our settings are set to page. All right, the next step is going to be to build that page and pull all this data in with the query loop. So I'm gonna create a page. And this is gonna be query loop group page. 
and click publish. And you could put this on a template if you wanted to, but for this use case, I'm just going to put this on a page. But if you wanted to bring this, if you wanted to create like a slider template or some type of gallery template, you could come in and create that template and then tell it to be on whatever page you want. It's really up to you. And what you'll notice down on this page is here's our query loop group and we can add media. So I'm going to select this photo here and then we can hit add more. Select this one and we'll add a few more here. That looks good to me. So we have enough data here inside our group and Brick's query loop is gonna loop over each one of these items here. And that's the real power in querying a query, uh, this group here. So using Bricks Builder to query the group, that's what we're gonna do. Okay, next step is gonna be edit with Bricks. And we're gonna add a section and a container. And then inside that container, we're gonna add a block. And an image. So your structure panel should look just like this. Section, container, block, and then inside that block is an image. And we're gonna just do this really quickly because I'm gonna show you how fast this will work. So go to your block, click use query loop, click the icon, the infinity icon to open it up. And you'll see in our dropdown, we have post terms, users, but all your groups are here. So if you had a whole bunch of groups, you'd start to notice that this to get pretty big. Um, hopefully in the future, Bricks can help us manage this a little bit better, but for now it works okay. And select that group. And so it knows now that on this page that I'm editing that those four images are there. So let's come down to the image and assign the dynamic data. So click the select dynamic data button here and we're gonna map to that new group. So this is called query loop group image alpha. It's a really long <laughs> name, but look at that. All the images come in from that group by setting up the query first to look at the group and then telling the source here to be uh, our custom field, which is a subfield. Click save. I'm gonna style this up just a little bit. So on this block, I'm not gonna add classes. Uh, you should always add classes, but I'm not going to. Let's see. Nope, what I'm gonna do here is go to the container and set this to display grid. 1FR, 1FR, 1FR. And you'll notice here that some of the items are stretched a little bit here because this one is uh, not in landscape. So let's go do something like a height of 250 and then set the object fit to cover. So there we go, that looks a little bit better. I'm gonna click save and then go back to my page. So I'm just gonna to go to the page and edit it with WordPress and add a few more images. Let's see this one. And you can click add more as many times as you want and then go assign the images. It's really up to you. So if we view that on the front end, you'll see those images come in really quickly. Here, I'm gonna put mine right here. Look at that. So the query loop group is our group field and Bricks is just querying that group and displaying everything over and over again. One thing to note 
if you look at the dom because the way the query loop has to create this div over and over i'll show you why because we, we query looped that div wrapper because you can't query loop an image you have to query loop over some sort of container so you'll get that wrapper each time. So you might want to change like this tag to figure or something like that. Um, that might make a little bit more sense than to just wrap it with a div, but that's up to you. I'll leave the Dom structure, however you want it, but you know, you might do something like figure and then use a custom tag figure. And there's, certain styling on figure elements so you have to figure that as well uh, when you make a figure tag but that would make more sense in the dom structure and let's just clean it up a little bit here i'm also going to add just a little bit of gap onto this grid Let's see what that looks like there. Yeah, that's not too bad. So it's really easy to do this and you could even take this section, save it as a template and then apply that template wherever you want or call it. And then anywhere that you've mapped your meta box group field to a page or a post, you can have the power of that query uh, inside your page. So that's all the tutorial really is, uh, to show you how to set that query loop on the group and how powerful that can be. What you need to remember though, is you have to set that loop up on some sort of container and then the thing you want to pull in will be inside that loop. So if you had some text like I don't know, this was uh, an office staff and you wanted their titles to be here. You could add more data to that, uh, to the subfields. You could add another subfield here and it's going to pull that in too, which is really nice. And then if you wanted to, you can see how fast you can build other things here. So I'm going to add a slider real quick. Then I'm going to duplicate our query loop figure item here and just drag it down. And that's going to be my slide. Delete, delete, delete. And for this image we'll do, I think that's going to be fine. The settings there, let's change some options real quick. Um, three items to show, let's hit save. So you can take that and now you've got that information in a slider. I mean, that's really cool. And so, you know, how you save this as a template or how you use this, this figure wrapping the image, that's really where the power is. So you can take that and move it wherever you want on your website. And then if you go create another page, all you have to do is add your subfields here as many times as you want. So for a client website, I just finished up. It, it was a uh, home, home contractor and they wanted to have on every single one of their blog posts, they wanted to put a slider with the pictures from their blog post because they were using it as like a case study. So I created a template, put that template at the bottom of the blog post, uh, or wherever you wanted to. And then they just add the images in when they write their case study. And so the blog post pulls up, has all the information and then a slider of all the work that they did. And it looked really nice. And they just they keep saying how easy it is to manage this. We didn't know it would be that easy. And uh, yeah, so I'm using this a lot. It's a really powerful feature and uh, I think you should too. 
And that's it. That's I'm gonna wrap up the tutorial here and uh, put this one up. And uh, appreciate everybody for tuning in. If you want to like and subscribe, that always helps the channel out. And I will post more content like this. If you have any questions, make sure to drop them in the comments or reach out to me on Facebook. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day. Bye-bye.